Thank you, Joey. Boy, thank you. Great good job. Appreciate you guys very much. <coughs> you all know that I love this time of year. When we start to see the Christmas decorations, and thanks to the ladies that decorated it and Brian uh, for decorating the church this week. Uh, get you ready for this awesome time of year. There's so many memories, so many smiles. Last night, the Arctic Christmas parade. Uh, Love seeing all the, the, the faces uh, smiling on the side. We were in the parade last night. It was uh, such a blessing. And good job to see Arthur for that. I love the Christmas lights. If you didn't know, I don't like when people take my Christmas lights. <coughs> And if I find out it was you, you're going to find out what a Bible club it is. I did it wrong. It was you. I did I did. Uh, but there's so many things at this time of year, just like the season we just left, when we can say what we're thankful for. I mean, think about it. We just left Thanksgiving, what, a week and a half ago. We all had full bellies still last week. You might still have leftovers in your fridge, even. We we're so thankful for, for so many things. And today we're going to conclude this I'm Thankful For series as we kind of transition from one season into the next. The past four weeks, we've talked about uh, these four things. I've been thankful for my home, the possibilities that, that we have as a church and a church family as Christians. <coughs> I've been thankful for my life. And last week we talked about how we are thankful for our God. Today to wrap up this series, I want to talk about how we are thankful for the church. Our church, even maybe more specifically. And like all of you, I love the church. And I hope like all of you, I especially love Hartford Christian Church. This is my church home. This is, this is my people. What a, what, a, what a great church family we have. We are so very blessed. I hope that everyone recognizes that. That we have such a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And whenever you really love something, this church family, the, the church universe, God's kingdom, Hartford Christian Church, whenever you really love something, the prayers for thanksgiving of it, the, the prayers of thanks for that thing, they come easy. It comes easy for me to say, thank you, Lord, for our church. It's, it's simple for me to say, thank you, Father, for Hartford Christian Church. And I hope that it does for you as well. Because the sweet, sweet spirit Oh, it's just such a great... I hope that you look forward to coming here. I know that I do. Today I want to talk about why. The ABCs, perhaps, we will say, of why church is awesome. Amen. Now, we'll go through an A, a B, and a C. You can kind of see in your bulletins if you want to fill it out as we go. Might as well start at the beginning. Why is the church awesome to me? The church is awesome because the church is the assembly of God's people. This is when we get together. Now, we all know that the church is far bigger than just this building. It's far greater than just our own church family. When we talk about the church, we're talking about the body of Christ. We're talking about all those who believe and follow Jesus. But specifically now, when we talk about our church family getting together, what are we doing? We're the assembly of God's people. This is where we all come together to worship God at the appointed time, at the appointed hour. For us, it's Sunday mornings at 10.30. Now, there's so many other things that I hope that you're involved in. I would love to see you here on Wednesday night. We've had a real good study on Romans going. Uh, our, our kids' program on Wednesday night, in my opinion, is phenomenal. Uh, Sunday nights, we've had uh, a lot of different things. Tonight, Sunday night, 5 o'clock, we're going to have our Christmas dinner. Now, maybe you didn't sign up. You know what? It's okay. Come out. And, and if there's not enough food, there will be. But if there's not, you can have my portion because I, I want you there because it's such a great time of fellowship and assembly of God's people. Disappointed hour right now. If you can only make it once a week, if you can only make it for one hour, my request to you is Sunday mornings at 1030 because this is when the assembly of God's people really take place. And we, we want to do the things that the scripture has told us to do that we find in the book of Acts when we meet and break bread and pray and learn and worship all within that same hour, this assembly. Hebrews 10, 23 through 25. Uh, you've heard some of these verses before, but it's good stuff, so let's look at it again. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we have heard. 
For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do. But encourage one another. And the scripture goes on to say, because the time is at hand. It's coming soon. Jesus will soon be back. Are you ready? Let's encourage one another. Let's build each other up. So what is this telling me about our assembly of God's people? Well, you can see the, the highlighted word there. The, 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 you'll write that down in just a second. But hope. Hope. So we're... What is the church then? It's where God's people have confidence, assurance, hope, and encouragement. Just really driving home that hope today. Because as we go into this, this Christmas season, I think that's one of the gifts that we have been given as a church family. Hope. Not just a, a hope for a better tomorrow, or the hope that we have in our Savior, but the hope that we have in each other. We can help each other through. Christmas hope. I have a great hope for this Christmas season, and I hope you do too. I, I hope that this is the Christmas season where Hartford Christian Church can represent Christ as we worship His Son. As we worship the Son. As we worship baby Jesus. Right? This birthday of a king. I hope that this is the time of year that we can all enjoy together. I have a great hope that this is going to be the best Christmas ever. Why not, right? Why not? Really looking forward to our Christmas Eve service, December 24th, 6 o'clock. We're going to start pushing it real hard. We want the community involved. And we definitely want you here for that. Make plans to attend now on Christmas Eve. We'll talk more about hope then. This place, though, we have that we can come together to encourage, to have confidence, that assurance, that hope. Man, it's just such a great feeling. And I hope that you feel the same. Psalm 35, 18 is going to tell us something else about this assembly of God's people. David said, Then I will thank you in front of the great assembly. I will praise you before all the people. See, when we come together in this assembly of God's people, in this church, as our church family, what are we doing? We are praising God publicly. Now I have to ask you right now, do you praise God publicly? Think about that. If you're here right now, I believe this is a public setting. Yes, we are praising God publicly. Uh, anyone's invited to come through those doors. You all know how much it bothers me when I see a car drive by when I'm preaching. If you don't know that now, you haven't been here the last five years. I feel like they should be in here with us worshiping God. Right? B because we're in our public forum right now. We, we are ready to praise God. But what about when you leave these walls? Do you praise God publicly then? Maybe the question should be, how do we praise God? How? Through your attitude, through your actions, through your behavior that matches your belief. Does some of this sound familiar? It should. Because when we behave like Christians, we are indeed praising God. When we are obedient to what Christ has asked us to do, we are indeed praising God. So let me ask you again, are you praising God publicly? We can't expect for anyone to want to come here to learn about Christ with us if we are not representing Him publicly out there. What do we want to do with this assembly of God's people? We want to have this praising God publicly moment so we can practice and grow and strengthen and go out there and praise Him publicly as well. That's the A, our assembly of God's people. What else does the church do? The church is going to give us the basics of God's teaching. That's the B. We have our assembly, and we're going to have the basics. That's what the church can give us, or provide for us, we hope. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says, Work hard so you can be present. I'm sorry. Work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive His approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly explains the word of truth. Now you see where praising God publicly might come in hand with this verse right here. So when, what does this mean? What are, what are these basics that, that we need to learn here? Well, number one, you see there in bulletin, uh, the basics that we learn at the church is Christian living. Now, there's so many things that we can say here, is there not? What is Christian living? And I think this summarizes it all. Something that maybe you learned as a kid. Something that I hope everyone here knows, and if not, pay attention, because it's the most important thing you'll ever hear. Jesus loves me. This, I know. Jesus loves me. This I know. 
For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Christian living is whenever you live a life knowing that Jesus loves you and you behave in a way that says, I know that my Lord, my Savior loves me. Amen. That's number one basic of Christian of, uh, of what the church, the basic teaching. So what's number two? Communion. Thank you, Coy, for reading Matthew 26, 26. I asked him to do that earlier for me. Uh, communion. The center of our worship service. Now, if anybody else tells you anything different, I'm going to tell you they're wrong. This right here is the most important thing that we do when we come together as a church family each and every Sunday. In my opinion. A strong opinion on that. When we take this time to remember the blood that was spilled and the body that was broken, without that, without the blood of Christ, without His sacrifice, folks, there's no reason for us to assemble. I ain't simple. There's not. But yet he gave his blood, poured it out for you and for me. He gave his body, broke it for you and for me. He died for us. We've got a communion Sunday coming up. We haven't done this in a couple years. And on January 17th, I want you to write that down. This is going to be a very special day for our church. We're going to have a communion Sunday. Now, this is always the center of our worship, but this is going to be the center. The entire worship service is going to be based around communion. <coughs> January 17th. Make sure you're here for that. It'll be one you don't want to miss. And that's something that we try to teach is the basics. So that we all know that this time will empower you to remember why we worship. The third basic. One that we hold strong to here. Baptism. Acts 2.38 says Peter replied. What did he reply to? Peter, what shall we do? What are we going to do? We've messed up. We've done crucified the Savior. Now, what do we do? We believe. We believe that Jesus is the Christ. What do we do? What do we have to do to be saved? Peter replies, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's an important verse. And that's something that I want to teach everyone that I hope that is the basics of what that, that, that we know as Christians, if you want to be a Christian, you must be baptized. If you want to follow Christ, this is what you do. If you've decided to follow Jesus, this is your next step. Accept Him by baptism. So we've got our Christian living, we've got our communion, we've got baptism. The next basic I'm going to say is prayer. Remember we talked about a little bit about prayer last week when we went through the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 6, 9 through 13. Something that I think that we should all have memorized. But it's just a basic outline. It's a good prayer to repeat for sure. But we don't pray exactly these words every time. We, we pray along this outline. We need to learn to pray. Scripture says we should pray continually. Be in a continual state of prayer. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. It says that we should always be praying. Now to me, that doesn't mean that we don't ever say amen, right? That we don't ever close out that prayer. What it means is that we are always praying every single day of our lives. And we need to recognize that and we need to learn that and that is most certainly a basic of God's teaching that you should be learning at the church. Christian living, communion, baptism, and prayer. So then, we got the A of assembly and we got the B of basics. Well, what about the C? Oh, this one's really good. It's the culmination of God's plan. The church is the culmination of God's plan. It, it teaches it, but it is the culmination of God's plan. I don't know about you all, but I am certainly thankful that God's plan has come together. When we talk about the communion and the sacrifice, when we talk about the assembly of our church family, I'm sure glad God's plan came together. When we talk about the fact that we know that through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, 
who we have taken as our Savior, that we can attain salvation, forgiveness. <coughs> I love it that God's plan came together. Peter said, uh, Jesus said, Peter, who do you think I, I am? Remember what Peter said? I believe that you are the, the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, that upon this rock I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Amen. Amen. Man, that's powerful. When you really read it, you think about it. That is strong. Amen. That rock of our salvation. We're blessed by that. I'm thankful for the church. Amen. And what about the church? Does it do God's work? This might be a little tricky before you answer that. The church doesn't do God's work. God does God's work. So what does God's work do? Just a couple examples. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 says this. I'll go back to verse 5. Who is Apollos? Who is Paul? We are only God's servants through whom you believe the good news, the gospel message. Each of us did the work the Lord gave us. I planted the seeds in your heart. Apollos watered it. But it was God who made it grow. God's work is growth. And each and every one of us in the it. And then 1 Corinthians 15, 57. You should know this verse by heart by now because I've used it like every week of this series. Right? Our victory comes from God. God gives us victory. You see, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, I hope that this word always pops into your mind. Victory. Praise be to God who gives us victory through Jesus Christ, His Son. Amen. What does God give? God gives us. God's word gives us growth. gives us victory. The list could really go on and on and on. So then what is our responsibility? If God does God's work, I think it's our responsibility to serve God, to, to do His will. The church is here to serve Him. As we continue to do God's will as a church family, I think that it's important for us all to never, ever, 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 ever underestimate how important our responsibility is to serve Him. When we talk about praising publicly, we're serving Him. When we talk about learning the basics of Christian living, of communion, of baptism, of prayer, we're talking about serving Him. When we talk about teaching others the basics of Christian living, communion, baptism, and prayer, we're talking about serving Him. When we talk about the culmination of God's plan through His Son, Jesus Christ, our obedience to Him, we're talking about serving Him. Him. Folks, don't ever underestimate our responsibility to serve Him. So what, what can we do? Right here, right now, let's talk about this. Christmas Eve service is a great excuse to get somebody into our church. There's more. Next week we're going to have an adult drama. It's going to be special service. Invite a friend. Invite a neighbor. Hey, come and check out our drama. The drama team will going to practice right after church today. And I got something else. December 17th. Our kids are going to present their Christmas uh, cantata, their, their play that they've been working so hard on. Man, if nothing, if there's anything in the world that can get someone that doesn't normally come to church, into church, it's the kids. Amen. It's the kids. This is why I've insisted since day one that our kids program will be on Sunday mornings. Because I think it's important to give the kids that time and bring people in. Amen. And let them know about Jesus. There's three excuses right there. All right? Or you can just tell them there's a really good looking preacher there. Whatever it is. Amen. Don't raise your hands. <laughs> Whatever it may be. Tell them we laugh together. Tell them we worship together. Tell them we praise God together. Folks, you do whatever you've got to do to get them in here so we can tell them about Jesus Christ. Because there's nothing more important than they'll ever learn than this. Amen. Jesus loves me. This I know. I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for our church, for our church family. Thank you, Lord, for Hartford Christian Church, for the work that has happened here in the last 112 years and the work that will continue on for the next 112 years. 
Thank you, Lord, for the hope that we are given through this church. How can we be anything but thankful when it comes to our church family? Scott mentioned the Advent earlier. You know, I like to do that kind of thing. Every year we have something, some kind of theme. This year I'm going to be blessed to open the first gift of Christmas. And the first gift that we get through our thankfulness for our church. Is hope. Amen. So what about this hope? This year our Christmas theme is Shine Jesus Shine. As a church family, I believe we have a responsibility to shine so many things for Jesus. This week I'm asking you to shine the hope for Jesus. Share that hope. Share that love. Let's let our hope shine for all of Hartford and Beaverdam and Ohio County and Kentucky and the United States of America and for our world to see. Let's shine the hope of Jesus that we know about. It's just too important not to. So what, is, what do we have as the first gift? Hopefully, the church helps provide hope. Can you imagine that day when Jesus was born? If that's not a day that we can think of hope, then nothing is. Would you please bow with me? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so very, very much for this time we have together every week to come and worship you. Lord, thank you for the hope that we have been given through your Son, Jesus. That confident hope, that, that optimistic patience, that, that hope that just never ends, Lord, because of your Son. We thank you so very much for allowing us, the body of Christ, to worship you. Help us to be the church everywhere we go, to praise you publicly. Help us to represent you in all that we say and do by learning the basic fact that Jesus loves us. Lord, we can't thank you enough for being such an awesome God. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all please stand. We have our hymn of invitation. If today is the day where you are ready to experience a hope unlike any other, please do not hesitate to come down this aisle as we sing.